Vance, our office doesn't handle only murder cases. Sometimes, as in this one, the case is a little less physical, but still, it's interesting. You don't have to convince me that being a district attorney isn't dull, Markham. <laughs> uh, this Joe Somer, whom we're going to see, just what is the charge against him? His partner is accusing him of grand larceny. Oh. I happen to know Somer pretty well, and before an indictment is handed down, I want to talk to him. I liked him. Quiet, always considerate. Uh, nice of you to come with me, Vance. I'm glad of the chance to get out of the office. Good. Well, this is the street you said Somer lives on house should be that one. There's a crowd around that house, man. Something's happened. No doubt about that, my friend. Let's find out what. There's a police officer over there, Markham. Yes. Let's find out about this. I'm with you, Vance. Hey, right, stop coming, will you? Pardon me. Sorry. Excuse me, please. Get back, everybody. Get back there. Hello, officer. I'm District Attorney Markham. Oh, sure. I recognize you, Mr. Markham. It's quite a thing we have here. A fellow lives here. A man named Joe Somer jumped or fell from the roof of his house. What? He was dead when he hit the ground. Joe Somer, Markham. That's the man you wanted to see. Not right now. It was suicide, all right, Mr. Markham. Almost hit a couple of people when he jumped. That's awful. I uh, found a suicide note in the house. There wasn't anybody home, but the note was right where I couldn't miss it when I went in. I'll uh, turn it in with my report. All right, officer. Well, Vance, I promised you a case. All right, it looks like it's over before it even began. That, my friend, is a matter of opinion. Perhaps there is no larceny case, but I have an idea that instead of it, we're going to have a murder investigation. Mr. Anderson, D.A. in his office? Yes, he is, Sergeant. He's, he's on the telephone, though. Well, that's okay. You'll want to see me. No, but I'll let you know as soon as something develops. Bye. Hello, Heath. Hi, D.A. Just got a report on that suicide note found at Joe Somer's house. Yes. Completely legitimate, D.A. We had our experts check the writing. There's no question but that Joe Somer wrote it. He wrote a suicide note? and apparently jumped from the roof of his house. What do you mean, apparently? Well, Father Vance thought it might be murder. Oh, he did? Yes. That guy thinks everything is murder. I'm waiting for the day when there's a murder case that he'll say it's suicide. You'll have a long wait, Heath. Vance doesn't often make mistakes. Ah, everybody makes mistakes, D.A., even I do. Not you, Sergeant Heath. Yeah, me. And if I can make him, I guess Vance can make him once in a while, too. The possibility is there, undoubtedly. Well? The only thing is, I can't ever remember Vance being wrong for any length of time. I don't imagine I'll be too long, Mrs. Somer. All Thank right. you for letting me use this desk. I mean, it's quite all right, Mr. Vance, but just what are you writing? Nothing, really, just scribbling. Are there any more pens in this house? You've tried all of them that I could find, including Joe's fountain pen. What's the big idea? I won't know whether or not it's a big idea until later. Right now, I'm... Oh, there's someone at the door. Excuse me. Oh, go right ahead, Mrs. Somer. Please don't let me disturb you. Any more than you have, you mean. Yes? Oh, Mr. Dale. Mrs. Somer, uh, may I come in? Why, yes. Yes, of course. I have company, as you can see. Oh. Follow Vance, the private investigator. Mr. Vance, this is Alfred Dale, my husband's partner. How do you do? Hello, Vance. It took Joe's death to get you over to our house, didn't it, Mr. Dale? Well, I... Too bad you didn't find time to come here while he was still alive. Mrs. Somer, I assure you, Excuse I... Excuse me, please. Mrs. Somer, I'm finished with those pens. All right. Now, can you tell me what your husband was doing on the roof? I'm trying to find out if he deliberately went up there to commit suicide, or if he got the idea while he was on the roof. He left a note, the papers say. Doesn't that indicate he went up there to jump? Not necessarily. And I believe I was asking Mrs. Somer. Oh, Sorry. When I left the house yesterday morning, Vance, I asked Joe to fix the radio aerial on the roof. That might have given him the idea. Yes, it might. May I go up and see the roof? If you like. Wait till I throw a coat over my shoulders and I'll go up with you. Might just as well see the place where poor Joe jumped. Like to come up, Mr. Dale? Uh, all right. This way, gentlemen. Up these steps to the second floor, then we go up through the attic to the roof. Be done. There's a light at the top of these steps. I'll turn it on. Uh. 
You gentlemen might have a little trouble in the attic. There's no light there, and I'm afraid there are a lot of trunks lying around. And there are in practically every attic. Go right ahead, gentlemen. I'll turn on this light. I'll see you, Dale. Certainly. Very well. You know, there's something about this procession reminds me of the three little Indians. Isn't that ten little Indians? Not after seven of them were killed. You're perfectly right, of course. Careful now, it's pretty dark up here. Indeed it is. Just walk straight ahead, Mr. Dale. There are a few steps leading up to the roof. You know, there are times when I... Oh! oh. oh. oh what a... Sorry, I must have kicked one of your trunks. It can stand it. Find the steps all right, Mr. Dale? Yes, yes, all right, sir. Huh. Good thing you brought your coat, Mrs. Summer. Yes, I suppose it is. Well, so this is the roof from which your husband jumped, fell, or was pushed to his death. Pushed? My husband killed himself, then. There, see, there's the aerial I told you about. Look over here on the other side of it. You see where there's new wire around the insulator? Yes, I do. Apparently, your theory was right, Mrs. Sommer. I imagine so. Hmm. Well, what else do we do now that we're up here? Not a thing. We've done everything I wanted to do. But what's more important, I've found out everything I wanted to know. <laughs> I'm just about to go to bed, Markham, but I thought I'd call you and report what happened today at the Somers' house. You know, I'm very anxious to hear. What'd you find out? Well, first of all, I met Joe Somers' partner, Alfred Dale. You did? We went up to the roof. What? Matt, what's happened? That was a shot. Matt, are you there? What happened? It's all right, my friend. Good. I'm lying here on the floor, out of reach of any second bullet. Besides, there's no light in the room now. Somebody fired at me from the fire escape and got the lamp instead. But, man, how can you be that calm? Somebody just tried to kill you. Yes, I know. And that means you were right. That Somers' death wasn't suicide, but murder. And the murderer was just close to you. That isn't the only thing the shot meant, Markham. It also meant that I am very close to the murderer. You're a smart dame, you are. Your husband knocks himself off, and what do you do? You Tony. come running to me. Tony. What is this, a playground? Tony. Tony, Tony. What do you expect from me? Oh, Tony. Are you going to knock myself out crying? I get smart. You're cute and I like it, but keep away from me for a while. But I don't understand why. I don't understand why. I'll tell you why. You inherit a lot of dough. That special clause about suicide in your husband's insurance takes care of you. Me, I'm a mug. All right, so you go for me. So the cops find out. So what'd they say? What can they say? What can they say? They can say I knocked off your old man so I could get you in that dough. But Tony... But Tony, you can butt Tony me for now. So, there's... Well, I got you two to get him. All right, now, Lila, take it easy. Well, this is the dame that took my place. I was hoping I'd find her here. I'm going to turn her inside out. I'm going to... Oh. <gasps> out. Now, you heard me. I said out. Oh, no, you don't. I don't get rid of easy. Nobody's moving in till I get ready to move out, and I'm not ready yet. No, no, no. Get out of here, Lila. Why? Because you slapped me? Come on. You slapped me before, and I stayed. What did yeah, you... Yeah, yeah, stop, yeah, yeah. Stop pushing me. When I say out, I mean out. Tony, you'll be awfully sorry sure, about this. Sure, sure, sure. I'll make you... Out. Let me in. Let me in. I'm sorry, sweetie. Oh. I guess Lila's got a temper. Oh, you guess she has. You're a pretty oh. good guesser. I hate oh. to think what that girl would have done to me if you hadn't stopped it. Right now I'm thinking about what she's going to do to me oh. because I did. Now look, Mark, you listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. I don't doubt that, Miss... Uh... Uh, just call me Lila. I'm going to hand you the murder of Joe Somer. Hand him to you right on a silver platter. Well, that's all very well, Lila, except that indications are that Somer committed suicide. He left a note. I don't care what he left. I know a guy who wanted him dead. Just fool around with that. <laughs> Wishing someone were dead rarely is fatal to a victim. Huh? Well, Tony didn't only wish. He gets what he wants. And he wanted Mrs. Somer. Joe Somer was in the way. Tony got rid of him. I don't know how, I just know he did. All right, Lila. Let's concede for a moment that you know he did. How do you prove it? That isn't my job. You're the district attorney, aren't you? I was, when I looked last. Oh, very funny. Now, just a moment, I want to call Philo Vance. Well, you'd be better off calling a cop and having him pick up Tony. Up until now, Lila, I've been a pretty good judge of my own welfare, thank you. Hmm. Hello, Vance speaking. Uh, Markham Vance, listen, there seems to be more and more confirmation of your murder theory about Joe Somer. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Markham. 
Actually and originally, it wasn't a theory, merely an idea, despite that suicide note. Which has never been explained. But which will be. Good. Now, what's the extra confirmation you called me about? Well, there's a girl in my office. Markham. A girl named Lila, who is the ex-girlfriend of a racketeer named hey. Tony Lester. She's been superseded by... Guess who? Mrs. Somer. Oh, now, Van. Well, it had to be Mrs. Somer, or it wouldn't have had any connection with this case. In which event, you wouldn't have called me. Reasonable? Reasonable, understandable, and accurate. That's what it is, Vance. Now, this girl claims Tony is the kind of character who wouldn't let a mere murder stand in the way if he wanted something. All right, that is. Please, Lila. What? Uh, nothing, Vance. I wasn't talking to you. Oh. Well, I thought I'd let you know about this development. Well, thank you. Now I'll let you know something. Yes? Despite the suicide note, which I'll explain some other time... I'll repeat that it definitely was murder. And I'll tell you something a little more important. And that is? That I also know who pushed Joe Somer off the roof. This is District Attorney Markham. The rooftop murder case began with the apparent suicide of Joe Somer. Vance, believing Somer was murdered, has found substantiation of his theory, despite the presence of a bona fide suicide note. Inasmuch as Vance insists it is a murder, I know we have three suspects. Tony Lester, a racketeer, Alfred Dale, Somer's partner, and Somer's widow. To continue our investigations, I have met Vance in the office shared by Somer and Dale. Well, Vance, I found the partnership papers right here in the desk drawer. Uh... Vance, you're not listening to me. Oh, yes, I am, my friend. I was just trying out all the office pens. Are you through now? No. There. You now have my undivided attention. Good. What does the partnership contract say? Uh, that in the event of death of one partner, the other partner takes over completely. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, is Alfred Dale the murderer? I've just found his motive. Yes, you most certainly have. <laughs> Issue properly evaded. <laughs> Very well, tell me this. What are you trying all those office pens for? I tried all of the pens at Somer's house. With the cooperation of the homicide department, I borrowed the suicide note Somer left. And I can tell you definitely, none of the pens wrote that note. In fact, I don't believe any of the pens in this office were used either. But the note was definitely written by Somer. So you keep telling me, and I agree that it was. What's the answer? You think Somer wrote a suicide note? The murderer knew he wrote it with the intention of killing himself, but acted regardless? Hardly. What? Well, what's going on? Oh, hello, Mr. Dale. This is District Attorney Mark. How are you? How We've been using your office. So I see. We have a search warrant, Mr. Dale. It's entirely legal. It's a little embarrassing. You'll have to admit that. Legal enough. Mr. Dale, if I were you, I wouldn't worry about any embarrassment that might be caused you in this office. What? What do you mean? Yesterday, when you and I and Mrs. Somer were on the way to the roof, the attic was very dark. It was that. You were in the lead, but you avoided a trunk that I promptly bumped into. What? Yes, that's true, now that I recall it. Mrs. Somers said you'd never been in that house before, yet you avoided the trunk. Oh, I have the... Uh, I have very good eyesight. Or a good memory. What do you mean? I just don't want you to resent our being here, that's all. We do have good reason, don't you think? I don't think I have anything to say. Well, that, Mr. Dale, is probably the smartest thing you've said since you came into this room. What does that mean? That I'm due to be arrested any moment on suspicion of murder? I wouldn't say that. Not any moment, Mr. Dale. I want to be very sure of my proof before Mr. Markham makes any arrest in this case. Oh, but Tony, I'm sorry. Uh, You'll never know how sorry I am. I went to the district attorney. She's sorry. She rats on me. Now she's sorry. Look, I'm getting tired of kicking you out of my apartment. I'll beat it, Lila. Oh, let me stay, Tony. I won't be any trouble. Just, just let me hang around. Out. Ah, oh, you're expecting that summer day. She's going to be here. Shut up, you. Don't you talk about it. Don't even say her name. Oh, I'm not good enough to say her name, huh? I'll say it. I'll scream it so that everybody can hear it. Shut up, I said. All right, get out. Get out fast before I change my mind and start tossing you out. Why are you going? Tony. Tony, darling. Tony, Tony, darling. You make me sick. How did I ever go for a dame like you anyhow? Sometimes I think I'm... Oh. Okay, Lester, open it up in there. Who is it? Sergeant Heath, oh, homicide. Open up. Oh, you really did it to me, didn't you, Lila? I'm going to get out of here. I can't stand a pinch right now. Tony, Tony, I left the door unlocked when I came in. Oh, you dope. You... Okay, Lester, hold it. You're not going anywhere. According to you. According to me, I'm leaving right this minute. Hold it, I said. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks for the warning shot. I can take a hint, Heath. 
You want me to go with you? I I go. No, don't, don't. Come to think of it, even you will be better company than this. Well, what is it you wanted now, Mr. Vance? All the clippings you have on a man named Joe Somer. I don't imagine there'll be too many. Well, if his name was ever in our paper, we'd have the clips in an envelope. You don't want the stuff on a suicide, do you? No. Ah, it's a good thing those clippings haven't been filed yet. Uh, T to T U T U to S S S E S E S E S U. Oh, here we are. Silly, Savonsky, Skelly, small. Small, small. Oh, here we are. Summer. Joe. Here's his envelope, Mr. Vance. He feels kind of thin. Well, I expected that. Now, let's see what's in it. Mm hmm. Two clippings, one dated yeah. five years ago. A little item about the marriage of Joe Somer and Dorothy Blaine. The other... Mm. Interesting, huh? Mm, very. This first clipping is even more revealing, however, in the light of the second one. Listen to this first one. Introduced only three months ago at a beach club, Dorothy Blaine and Joe Somer culminated a whirlwind romance in marriage at the home of so-and-so last night. Couple left for a honeymoon in Bermuda. Well, that's not too unusual. In view of this, it is. Listen, here's the second clipping. Uh-huh. Joe Somer, local businessman and partner in the firm of Somer and Dale, was taken to Mercy Hospital this morning, suffering from a nervous collapse. Yeah, yeah. According to Alfred Dale, only his fortunate earlier arrival at the office prevented his partner's suicide. It, it, that, that means something, huh? It does to me. It's going to mean a whole lot more to Alfred Dale. <laughs> It's you. Tony, I waited out here in the street to find out what would happen to you. So what? I heard you were arrested. You heard I was arrested. Sure, I was arrested, but I'm out. Did they think you killed my husband? How do I know what they think? All I know is I'm getting out of town. I'm going with you. I don't be a dope. I need you like I need a hole in the head. You're taking me. I'm going home to pack right now. I'll meet you at the airport in an hour. Now, listen. You better take me, Tony. It'll be so much better for you if you do. I'm a busy man, Vance. I can't be running around town just because you call me and want me to be somewhere. You won't be bothered very much longer, Mr. Dale. That's good. I wonder why Mrs. Somer doesn't answer her bell. You'd better try it again. Did it ever occur to you that perhaps she isn't home? Did it ever occur to you that this house might be watched? And if she weren't home, that man across the street who happens to be Sergeant Heath of the Homicide Department would have told me... But I still have... Mr. Vance. Yes, and Mr. Dale, your husband's partner. You two remember each other, of course. Naturally. We're coming in, Mrs. Somer. Yes, of course. I really don't know what I'm doing here, Mrs. Somer. I don't either. What is it you want, Vance? We want to go into the living room, for one thing. We'll talk out here, if you don't mind. Oh, but I do. Well. Well, what's that I see in the living room? A trunk. Going somewhere, Mrs. Somer? Come in, gentlemen. Yes, I was going somewhere. I was leaving town. Any objections, Vance? Definitely. Mrs. Somer, do you own a gun? Of course not. What kind of a question is that? Figure it out. You see, the person who killed your husband fired a shot at me the other night. You're convinced that someone killed my husband? Yes. That he didn't commit suicide? That's right. Dale, do you own a gun? Why, uh, I'll come now. It'll probably be on record if you do. All right, Vance. I own a gun. And I carry it. I'll take it if you don't mind. Here you are. Thank you. Pardon my back a moment, Mrs. Somer. Sure. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Vance, what are you trying to Stop do? Stop right there, Dale. I want you to remember something for me. Just one second while I lay your gun down on the table. Now. Now what? Mr. Dale, do you recall that about six or seven years ago your partner tried to commit suicide? Yes, I do. You left a suicide note at that time. What happened to it? Why, I... I don't know. I do. It's the same suicide note the police found in this house just after Mr. Soma was pushed off the roof. It had to be. There wasn't a pen in this house or in your office that matched the pen or ink used in that letter. The police found the first suicide note, planted here to indicate Soma really did it the second time. What are you trying to prove? And if it's the fact that I murdered my husband, let me inform you that I never even knew him when he tried to kill himself the first time. That's correct. You didn't. Oh, I see what you're driving at. That's good. I took the note six years ago, kept it, 
killed Silver the other day and left the note here, and you thought I was in this house before when you discovered I didn't trip over the trunk in the dark and attic. Is that what I'm driving at? Well, it, it must be. But I won't stand for it, Vance. I, I won't be framed for murder. Not right where not... you are, Dale. Do yourself a favor. Don't make me force you to stay. Mrs. Stomer. Yes? You killed your husband, of course. So you say. So I say, and so I can prove. And you know I'm not bluffing, don't you? You knew you gave yourself away up on the roof the other day. That's the reason you tried to kill me in my apartment. Yes. I know you're not bluffing. I realize what I did. And I realize that I've got to kill you now. You realize that too, don't you? Vance, she's picked up my gun. She won't use it. Oh, no? Now, Mrs. Somer... I won't use it, huh, Vance? That's what you think. Vance, my gun is loaded. He knows. And he must know that I'm going to shoot both of you now. The gun won't fire, what? Mrs. Somer. I took out the bullets when I turned my back on you a moment ago. Now I'll take that gun away. Thank you. That will be all, Mrs. Somer. All that is, except my explaining to Mr. Markham how I knew it was you. Well, Vance, I guess there isn't anything more to tell in this case except the most important thing of all. How did you know it was Mrs. Sommer? First of all, we know from her confession that she found her husband's old suicide note. Vance, please, how did you know she was the murderer? Well, Markham, she claimed she was not at home when her husband allegedly jumped to his death. Yes? She said he went up to the roof to fix a radio aerial. And that's what gave him the idea to come down, write the suicide note, then go back and jump. That was her story. She said she hadn't been on the roof after her husband was killed until she went up with Dale and me. Yet she knew the aerial was broken. Well, she could have known that without going up there, Markham. A yeah. wire dangling, bad reception if a radio set were in good order, a number of ways. There was one thing she couldn't know, though. What was that? How it had been fixed. She walked right over to the spot where a new wire had been wound around the insulator. Yes. Yeah. Now, the only way she could have known that was if she had been there when her husband was fixing it. Or, of course, immediately after which wasn't likely. It couldn't have been immediately after that. She had to leave the house after pushing him off the roof. She probably left by a back exit, went shopping, and returned in time to hear the bad news. Undoubtedly. Uh. When she walked to the aerial, she knew she'd made a mistake. But she wasn't sure that I knew what she had done. Oh? She tried to kill me so as to be on the safe side. But then when I let her alone for a while, she thought perhaps I hadn't noticed her error and she didn't try to kill me again. Yes. I let her alone, as you must realize, because I wanted to be absolutely sure about her. I know that. Her motive was money. Money and her love for Tony Lester. Vance, one thing has always puzzled me about this case. You never knew Joe Somer. All you saw was his covered body the day we went up to his house. Yet, you didn't believe it was suicide even then. Why? Something you said, Markham. Something I said? Something you and the police officer said, rather. You told me how considerate a man Joe Somer was as we were driving over to see him. Yes, that's right. The policeman said that Somer narrowly escaped hitting some people who were walking in front of his house when he jumped. Oh, I see what you mean. A considerate man would have made sure he wasn't going to injure anyone else, even though he had decided to do away with himself. That's right. Uh -huh. Of course, I wasn't sure, but subsequent events convinced me I was right. All I can say is that fortunately for us, we had you to get to the bottom of this murder. Thank you, but that's completely unimportant. The only thing that matters is that when we reached the bottom of the murder, we reached the end of the rooftop murder case. Thank <laughs> you.